Tonight on Prime Business, Ghana to launch a biggest trade fair to promote and expand local businesses. We'll hear from a Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry. Date is to be announced soon, but that will be here in Accra. And that is going to be um, a much bigger fair, which will include every sector in terms of what we have been able to do. Also, GCB Bank anticipates low level of patronage on digital channels due to e-levy, but confidence of a strong rebound within the shortest possible time. Already you have the Momo and the other ones that we were competing with. So in terms of the G money, what we'll do, we'll keep it and still join the industry one. So we'll do what we call co-optician. We are part of the industry and the G money stands alone. We have more from the Ghana Stock Exchange fact behind the figures session. Bank report projects crude oil prices will end this year about $100 per barrel, warning that high inflation will persist till end of 2024. My name is Beverly Broom. Please stay for details. Let's settle for the details now. Bearing any hitches, governments will launch the biggest trade fair in the country, dubbed Ghana Trade Fair, later in the year to promote and expand local businesses as well as create jobs. This is expected to support existing fairs. A Deputy Trade and Industry Minister, Nanama Dokwai Siame J, says the Ghana Trade Fair will showcase products and services from every sector of the economy. She disclosed this to join business at the relaunched Exim Bank's popular Tuesday Market, an initiative to create awareness for made in Ghana products and harness their potential for export. There's more in the following report. The Tuesday Market is a prelude to the Ghana Fair to be organized later in the year, which will promote businesses in all sectors of the economy. Nana Madukia Isiame Eje is a Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry and tells Joy Business organizing trade fairs will help expand the about 90% of micro small businesses into giant firms. There are plans for fairs all through the year, starting with the Ghana Fair, which is to be, um, it's, the date is to be announced soon, but that will be here in Accra, and that is going to be um, a much bigger fair, which will include every sector in terms of what we have been able to do and it will also include um, prospects in the various regions the investment uh, prospects in the in the various regions in the past we've done fairs in other parts of the country we've done fairs in Koforidia and we've done fairs in in Kumasi and other parts of the country and knowing how seriously the ordinary Ghanaian takes manufacturing and industrialization it is very important for us to be able to showcase what we have been able to do and we are going to encourage the organization of fairs across across the country deputy chief executive in charge of banking and business at ghana exim bank rosemary Barry archer said her outfit is using the tuesday market to promote local businesses she said exim bank is committed to government xme development agenda we are committed to the government's SME development agenda. Indeed, the board of Ghana Exim Bank, um, together with executive management, have approved a certain amount of money that goes into, into uh, financing this fair. 
It might also uh, interest you to note that it's free. We don't charge them anything. So it's by invitation. We wish we could have about 200 businesses here today, but we couldn't. We have about 60 businesses represented here today. So indeed, we are committed to this cause and it could even get better. Hip Life artist Kofi Kinata urged Ghanaians to patronize locally made goods to grow businesses and create jobs. I think there should be a law or some kind of enforcement that's going to force them to put their Ghana products like as, as a very good place, like showcase it for people to see. Because sometimes when you go to these supermarkets, the Ghanaian products are, excuse me to say, are like they are, they are, they are hidden it. And so it should be, when they say showcase, it should be at a place where everybody can see it. GCB Bank is anticipating low level of patronage by customers on its digital channels with the implementation of the electronic transactions levy, but confident of a strong rebound within the shortest possible time. There are fears that some customers may deactivate their digital account in order to avoid the payment of the 1.5% levy, which begin on May 1st. Taking its turn at the Ghana Stock Exchange organized Facts Behind Figures, Deputy Managing Director of GCB Bank, Sokrita Fram, has pressed confidence that the bank will maintain its dominance in the digital space. GCB Bank's digital platforms, especially the G-Money, recorded some gains during its first year of introduction, presenting its 2021 year performance at the Ghana Stock Exchange organized Facts Behind the Figures event. The Deputy Managing Director in charge of finance, Socrates Afram, says the bank will invest heavily in digital platforms despite the introduction of the e-levy. Already you have the Momo and the other ones that we were competing with. So in terms of the G money, what we'll do, we'll keep it and still join the industry one. So we'll do what we call co-optician. We are part of the industry and the G money stands alone. Because the G money will be exclusively GCVs, in our view, we think we'll be a lot more nimble in terms of what we do to it, what we add, what we subtract. The industry wide wallet, it is great. It will bring convenience to our customers. So even if you're on G money, you can still play in that space. And if you're in the industry space, you can still play on G money. So it's up to us to put a lot more attractive products on the G-Money. That will serve the needs of customers. And that we have a plan to do that. So G-Money will continue to grow. Managing Director of the bank, Kofi Adumako, assured customers and shareholders that the bank is on a path of successive growths in order to give value to them. GCB has taken all the necessary steps to invest in technology, to invest in people, to invest in credit and writing standards, um, and processes, all in the interest of meeting our customers' expectations. So we will continue to do so. We expect our results to continue to soar. We expect to dominate this market because this market, we have the right to dominate. And we will dominate this market with support from you, our loyal customers, and all other stakeholders. Meanwhile, concerns about the high cost of operations as a result of inflationary pressures and the city's volatility had impacted on the banking industry. An economist at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is admonishing the government to extensively harness its existing tax sources rather than introducing new taxes. Professor Eric Oting Abeye observes the already imposed taxes have not generated the needed revenue because successive government failed to effectively enact tax policies. He believes the instability in tax implementation over the years has cost the country some whooping revenue. The government's passage of the electronic transaction bill into law has received backlashes from the citizenry, including academia. Speaking at a public forum on e-levy at KNUST, Professor Eric Otin Abeyi indicated the issues and circling the implementation of the levy would affect its revenue mobilization. According to him, the electronic transaction levy is problematic since it lacks neutrality. Because of the delays in everything and the technicalities, the revenue assurance issues, 
it is believed that the revenue may not be uh, actually achieved. That that's the target. I talked about stability because if we are able to develop the permanent sources of taxes, such as the income tax, property tax in particular, which has not really been focused on, and actually uh, target the right basis that has to pay these taxes, we believe that we can yield enough revenue for development in Ghana. The public forum organized by the Faculty of Social Sciences at the KNUST was on the theme E-Levy and its implication, a multidisciplinary perspective. Meanwhile, Dr. Najim Youssef is imploring the government to be transparent in the collection of the E-Levy when implemented. He alluded to past incidents where Ghanaians are not privy to how much revenue is mobilized annually from taxes. We can leverage the advantage of IT to make our implementation very transparent, our reporting very transparent. For example, now, it's easy with technology, we can always get reporting on a monthly basis on how much has been collected from various stakeholders, maybe the telcos or the banking sector, and then make it known to the public. Once people see visibly what is going on, how the E-Levy is being implemented, how the funds are being administrated, it will boost the people's confidence. However, Dr. Youssef does not consent to the government's decision to outsource monitoring and assurance of the collection of the levy to a third party. He believes such capacities could be built internally. For Joy News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku reporting. The Bank of Ghana has disclosed that it has reached an advanced stage in connecting the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Systems to the Pan-African Payment and Settlement Systems to enhance financial inclusion in the country. The move, if completed, will enable financial technology firms, savings and loans companies and all payment systems on the GIPS platform to connect to PAPSS. Speaking at the 2022 edition of the Money Summit, the head of payment systems at the Bank of Ghana, Seto Amediku, was unbeat. The move will enhance trading on the continent since money can be moved easily within the African countries. All our banks are going to be linked to PAPS infrastructure through GIPS. Now, we have licensed fintechs we have service and loans companies, we have other payment institutions that are already linked with gifts and they are sponsoring banks. So as for example, Bank A get linked to PAPS through gifts, then with your mobile phone, you can do transaction through the PAPS infrastructure. So that is what is being implemented in all Africa countries. The only thing that it looks like as if only banks that came earlier in the discussion was that normally when we are implementing systems, we start with the matured institutions, the already known ones. So what we did was to ensure that we link all the RTGS of our various countries, which we have done already as we are speaking now, all the RTGS or the West African countries have been linked to PAPS. Now what we are doing now is that GIFS is in advanced stage of linking with PAPS. We have given, Bank of Ghana has given no objection letter to all the banks. They don't need any approval from Bank of Ghana. They just need to link to PAPS through uh, GIFS. President of the Insurance Association of Ghana, Shaibu Ali, is urging insurance companies to focus on growing the macro sector to deepen insurance coverage. Speaking to Joy Business at the launch of a new complaint management and advice bureau, an avenue set up for policyholders and general public to share their grievances about claims, Mr. Ali said that is the way to go to grow the sector. 
approximately 40 percent of the working population in Ghana have signed up on one form of insurance or the other. But Shaibu Ali believes to increase the number, insurance companies must widen their net. Very minimal. Why have you taken out pensions? Why have you taken out health insurance and all that from the bouquet? If we add all these things, the bouquet stands a better chance of growing and the percentage will be higher. But for now, we are stuck to this. How can we increase penetration in the country? I think we need to move away from the over concentration on the big ticket businesses to the informal sector, the micro insurance sector. We have Ghana is just about 40 percent insured. The 60 percent is uninsured. Go to the villages. So many people don't even know what insurance is. So for us, insurance people, on behalf we should of stop chasing the city dwellers who know insurance and are buying insurance, in insurance whom are compulsory insurances. To the villages, come up with micro insurances that are relevant to them. Sell insurance to somebody that cost him 10 Ghana cities, 20 Ghana cities. That will protect him for his property. That will protect him for his health or his life. And all all this would in the long run come to increase the penetration for us. But if we continue to concentrate on the 40% alone, that cannot grow the pie. So we need to start to think outside the box. Reacting to perceptions about delays in payment of claims, Acting Chief Executive of the Ghana Insurers Association, Dr. Kingsley Kwebasin, revealed that most insurance companies pay not less than 4 million claims on a daily basis. Now currently the issue of complaints I can assure you that it's mostly due to perception because insurance companies pay over 4 million Ghana cities in terms of claims every single day. So what we have not done well is to send the message for people to understand and appreciate that we pay claims. We have not trumpeted our um, activities enough. And so this campaign seeks to assure people that contrary to perceptions that there is no avenue for you to seek redress or uh, in terms of claims, we are trying to demystify that issue and then make people aware that there are opportunities and avenues available. Ghanaian musician Kwame Nsiapao, popularly known as Ochame Kwame, is the brand ambassador for Complaint Management and Advice Bureau. And I think that the conversation on insurance is very, very key. Um, the development of every nation is actually hedged on insurance. And so if the people do not trust that insurance companies will pay their claims, then the whole conversation on insurance is not happening. So my role is to be the Ochiame between the institutions and the everyday people like myself so that we will, we will bring the conversation from stakeholder mappings into the everyday um, conversation. So we are doing activations in schools, we are doing activations in market sectors, we are doing activations on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, so that everyday people like myself, people who identify with like nobodies like me, will also hear their voices. Complaint management and advice bureau aims at building consumer confidence, public trust and improving the image of insurance in Ghana. Prices of crude oil will end this year at about $100 per barrel. That's according to a new World Bank report on global commodity outlook. George Riafe has the rest of the story. World Bank in the report noted that prices averaging at around $100 a barrel will still be the highest since 2013. If the report is anything to go by, then we can say that prices at the global level could reduce marginally or go up again in the coming months, or let's say remain stable at the current levels. This is because crude oil is currently trading at $104 a barrel. This may rule out expectations by consumers that prices could be declining on the global market, let's say if the war in Ukraine should end today. It could also mean that consumers should brace themselves for continuous hikes in prices of petroleum products at the pumps locally. Joy Business is even learning that fuel prices could be going up again at the pumps from the next pricing window, which starts from May 1 this year. The World Bank in their report is also warning that the current hikes in prices of food and energy-related commodities are not likely to end this year, but in 2024. The development could mean that consumers should brace themselves for more hikes in food and petroleum prices at the pumps. 
the World Bank is even worried about how the development could badly affect a lot of economies around the world, especially the fragile and the low-middle-income countries that are already going through some challenges. Meanwhile, petroleum specialist Dr. Yusuf Suleimana says the World Bank's projection is apt and should be blamed on happenings on the international market. He spoke on the market, please. It's been long coming, uh, just that uh, 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 we, 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 we failed to see that. You know, Pandit would have seen that, I mean, even my, my, the Russian crisis, if you observe what, what had happened, you know, to the market, there have been what we call capital discipline. And so for the fact that <clears throat> well price were gravitating towards the, the, this three figure, a three digit figure of 100 and above, wasn't surprising. What really happened is that three factors were accountable for, you know, this bullish trajectory. One was the OPEC tax, you know, the other one was this opening of the economies, and then the vibrancy also in the Chinese economies. You know, this, this were the things that were driving, you know, demand. So one would have been expecting that supply should have been ramped up to match up with the demand, but that never happened because OPEC were still like a desert and they were not willing to release any barrels into the market. So this price hike that we are seeing, actually it's more, it, it has more to do with supply cuts, that is demand deficit, you know, it's also, yeah, a supply cut than, you know, a, a demand increase. You know, when demand increases, we could get price hikes. When supply is also short, we could get price hike. But this price hike we are seeing, is more, it, it has more to do with supply deficit, you know, in, uh, as against, you know, increase in demand, you know. So, and that is not good. So if you look at, you know, uh, uh, the aggregate of factors that is keeping the price as it is, one can only say that as a pundit, that the World Bank projection is something to go by. Away from that, some government workers and farmers in the Ashanti region have benefited from a fish farming training for self-employment even after retirement. The training comes on the back of calls for government workers to access entrepreneurial skills to venture into their own businesses after retirement. It was organized by the Crops Research Institute of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research aimed at equipping participants with an entrepreneurial and business management skills. There's more in the following report. About 14% of Ghanaians in retirement age receive a pension. As of 2018, there were close to 1.9 million people in Ghana aged 60 years, with about 270,000 of the figure receiving pensions. Many pensioners have had to rely on meager financial resources to fend for themselves. Director of the Crops Research Institute, Professor Moses Mochia, explains the motive for the workshop. We have also realized that of late, people need a lot of resources to go into fish farming. But we sat down and developed a simple thing, a collapsible pond that all farmers can easily afford. And also people are saying that when they go to pension, what are they going to do? So we thought about all this and we decided to come out with this aquaculture. The two-day training availed participants with aquaculture and business management and planning skills. The acquired skills would facilitate participants to harness their limited resources to make a living. Dr. Jonas Osei Edu, an economist at the Crops Research Institute, facilitated the training. What we're trying to do at Crop Research is to make sure that our technologies get out to the public through trainings. So this is the second training on aquaponics-based food systems. Basically, aquaponics has to do with how you can rear fish at your backyard and also use the wastewater to fertilize your crops. And you don't need so much to start. So we're trying to get to our industrial players through trainings of this nature. Some participants said the training has been impactful. I work with MOFA and we have been training farmers. But this one has given me new modern method of fish industry or the aquaculture. We've also known that feeding of the fingerlings or the fish has a time limit and quantity. You shouldn't let anybody come and feed them anyhow. That's all for Prime Business. We have more business news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I leave you with business news making headways 
on the international field.